Okay, I thought I'd show you how to make a Fitty Mecha Mecha. A Fitty Mecha Mecha is a flat four plait. So we have four fenu, four weaving strips, and it's a flat plait. Unlike a Fitty Tuapuku, which is a round four plait. So a Fitty Mecha Mecha is used for mainly teapotty headbands. Um, they're really handy things to know. I mean, you might want to dress up the top of your your kono or your kōnai uh, with your fitty mecha mecha. That looks pretty cool. So we'll look at how to weave a fitty mecha mecha today. I have two fenu, they're quite long, two fenu that I have done the half fenu to. And I'm going to split each fenu all the way through to the soft end and leave it joined together at the bottom, the hard end, the tucky end, by about that much. So do the same to both fenu all the way through to the soft end and leave it joined together at the tucky end. It's important that you split them pretty much right down the middle, half and half, rather than 75-25. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start the plait. Unlike most plaits, the fitty mecha mecha, you plait away from your body. Most plaits you plait towards your body, so this is different in that respect. What you're going to do is you're going to put these four strands together as if you were doing up the top of a cardboard box. I'll show you what I mean. So the first fenu in my right hand goes over and under, over one and under one. And the second fenu in my right hand, the one furthest from my body, goes under one, over one, it does it in reverse. So it looks like the top of a cardboard box. Okay, we're ready to weave. It's a very simple weave and I'm sure you'll pick up the rhythm really quickly. So the one that is lying underneath, the outside one that is lying underneath, which is this one here, this one here is lying on top. This outside one lying underneath is going to go in a straight line, straight across. So it's not going to angle up or angle down. Put it straight across and tuck it underneath that end one there. Just tuck it under. So now it's sticking out the side. You want it to be back into this part of the weaving. So you're going to bring it back up. It's going to go over one and then under one. And there it is there. It stays in the middle. And you might be tempted to pull it tight like that. Let, let it follow the same line as that fenu there. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. So you're going to work from this side to that side. Straight across, it's the same pattern. You're going straight across, tuck it under the end one, fold it back up and it goes over one and under one. So you're just going to go from side to side following the same rhythm, the same pattern, straight across, Fold it over one and tuck it under one. This black set I'm working with is a bit dry, so it's really hard to get a nice tight weave going on. Perhaps it'll tighten up as I get towards the softer part of this fenu. Okay, straight across, tuck it under the end one. And then back up, over one, under one. Straight across, tuck it under the end one over one, under one. So you're looking down on my hands and this is how I prefer to teach. So when I teach kono, or kōnai, or even kiti, I get my students to stand behind me so they can see my hands as a weaver and not as a spectator. Straight across, tuck it under the end one, back over one and under one. Straight across, tuck it under the end one, over one and under one. So there may come a time when you have to uh, add on, maybe your flax isn't long enough to weave the length needed to fit around someone's head. So you may have to add in. So
So let's create a short one. There, yeah, I just created a short one. It's pretty brutal. Okay, you want to wait until that short one is at the stage where it is going across, which is now. So it's the short one's turn to come across and tuck under the end one. It's at that point there that I get a, a long one, a new long piece, and I place it on top of that short one. And now I weave the short one and the long one as one together. This one here, we can simply trim that off afterwards. But for now, it can just stick out the side. I'll put that peg there just to keep it out of, out of the way. So you continue to weave the long one and the short one together. Try not to uh, add in or introduce long pieces all around the same area because you end up with a bit of a bulk around that part. Try and stagger the points at which you cast on or add in a new long fennel. So you're just going to continue in this way of going across Tuck it under the end one, and then back over one and under one. I want to cut that off, otherwise it will annoy me. Until you've got it to the length that you want it to be. So, let's have a look at what I've done. It's a little bit longer than this one here. What I'd like to do is to, I've been weaving this way, I'll just do a couple more so you can get back into the rhythm. Okay, I've been weaving that way, I'm going to turn it around and turn it over and now split these tucky ends that were left together. They were left together so you could do up that top of the cardboard box and get that, this fitty started. Fitty is to plait. Fitty is the Māori term for plait what we're doing. Okay, so I fitty until they're, uh, they're pretty short. Remember, this is a temporary type of uh, headband. I'm just going to have a extra scrappy bit of harakiki there, bit of flax. Okay, pretend that I have gone to the end with this soft end here, and we have woven the required length of fitty or plaited the required length and it can fit around someone's head and you're going to join it up. Some people go to the trouble of plaiting these through following the line of the uh, fitty. I wouldn't bother, just remember it's a temporary headband, it's something to keep the hair out of your eyes. Okay, I'm just tying that up. Just securing it tightly. You will you may find a better way of doing it. Just remember there's no right way, there's no wrong way. It's just the best way. And what you are trying to achieve is you're trying to secure this tea buddy. I like to bring these up. Kids like that too. Trip them off. Trim off these habits on the inside. They'll be quite secure. Give it one more tie. Putting your rubbish, always work in a neat and methodical manner, and keep your workspace tidy. And there, that's a tea party big enough to fit one of my daughter's teddy bears perhaps. But it's a fitty mika mika used to create a tea party, which is a headband. Okay, kia ora.